Hello everybody and welcome back to server of Snape's Depressed Daughter! We are almost done with the first book. There's only two more chapters and then gotta read the sequel, what a uh, little bit there is of it. Uh, first, sorry if you can hear the wind in the background. It got really windy all of a sudden. I have no idea why, but hopefully you can't hear it. Anyways, chapter seven, Quirrell. Snape's point of view. When she told me to remember what happened the day she got put on Gryffindor, I was shocked. How could I be so evil? <laughs> we are already off to a bad start. If you want to learn more on what you've done wrong over the years, I give you permission to do... Oh no. Legilimus? No. Mm. That is a word I cannot pronounce. And I don't even want to try. Legilib... Legilimency? Legilimency? It's one of those two, I think. But, uh, I am unsure. On me for you to see, she told me. Very well. That is all I could say and I perform. Why you gotta say that again? <laughs> Not the word I can't pronounce. <laughs> I don't know on her and I see horrible things How many cuts she had in her body and how many cuts she did a day how she was slapped by me How many I told her I didn't have time for her to go away of how I was and so much more I get out of her mind and go towards her. Why didn't you tell me how you felt Anastasia? I could have helped I say because you never had time for me. She said with tears rolling down her cheeks Anastasia's point of view. Tears were rolling down my cheeks. Was he so blind to not see that I was broken? I think to myself, Anastasia, my dearest apologies, he said, bracking the silence. I need time. Bye, professor. See you at dinner, I say. I then go outside and leave. I was going in one of the halls. No one was near. I then hear footsteps coming near me. But I thought it was a student, but then I was pinned against a wall to see it was Professor Quirrell! Get. Back. Up. No. Bad. Bad. Creepy. Weirdo. Gross. Professor, what are you doing? I say in a scared tone. Petrificus totalis, he said before I blacked out. I don't think Petrificus Totalis makes you black out. Unless she blacked out from fear, but wow, how convenient. It would have been so interesting to see this from her point of view, though. Like, her just getting, like, levitated towards, um... Or into the room where the, uh, the stone is, or... I think it's the mirror at that point. The mirror of Arised. Either way, that would have been so cool! That would have been interesting and fun. But, and like, we get to see, like, from her point of view, Coral talking to what appears to be himself. That would have been awesome. That would have been, but no. No, you had to black out instead and go to a third person point of view. I don't like you. You were very rude. Wibbly wobbly, tell me why me skip. I just realized I said Skippy. What in the uwu? It's fine. Third person point of view. It was already dinner. Snape was sitting in the staff table. He was looking for Anastasia and Gryffindor table. Just to see she wasn't there. He let it slide because maybe she w was just sleeping. So after dinner, he went to his sleeping chambers and slept. But while everyone thought everything was fine and good, Anastasia was in a weird room being tortured with the Cruciatus curse. Crucio. Why? To get her to speak of who was trying to stop him from getting the stone. 
but she refused and refused taking the paid for her friends, which she loved deep. There is no reason for this. There is no reason. You just decided you wanted to torture your character to make us feel bad for her, but there is no logical reason behind this. Why would he assume she knows who is spying on him? That makes no sense. You make no sense. You're trying to just get sympathy points for your character, but it's not working. I'm just angry. Tell me, what curse do I have to use for you to tell me who is spying on me? I already used two curses and I can't use the killing curse because I need you to tell me. So tell me, Crucio. Tell me, he yelled. That I'm not doing that. I won't tell you. I'm not. Why do you have to add in the Oz in there? You could have just wrote, she's like screaming in agony or something. You don't have to add in the Oz. Not the Oz. I won't tell you. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to make this at least a little bit more music for myself. Torture me all you want. I won't tell you, you monster. She doesn't even know though. Like, um, like, she doesn't even know. What? What? What is happening? You monster. Ah! <laughs> she screamed. Harry, you got it all wrong. It's Quirrell you have to go after, not my father. Father, help, she thought as Quirrell left not to be suspicious from his disappearance. She was left there to cry alone. There was no reason for a random torture scene. There was no reason for this. There was no reason for this. <laughs> Two weeks? Sorry, I just looked ahead and I... No! Snape's point of view. I went to the Great Hall for breakfast to see that Anastasia was not there eating with the other Gryffindors, which was very worrying. Last time she disappeared, she was probably going to die if Dumbledore and I wouldn't have found her. After the Great Hall, including me, I was walling through the corridors and I bumped into Miss Granger. Sorry, Professor Snape, she said. Watch where you are going, Miss Granger, I say in a cold voice. Yes, Professor, it won't happen again, she said, looking down. I need to talk to Miss Snape, my daughter. Have you seen her? I say in a monotone voice. No, sir, I haven't seen her since yesterday morning, Professor Snape, she said with a worried look. Very well, Miss Granger. You are dismissed, I say, walking away. Now I am worried myself. Anastasia is always with Miss know-it-all and her gang in her free time so it was weird that they haven't seen her wibbly wobbly timey wimey skip of two weeks two weeks i call bullshit no anastasia's point of view i have been blindfolded it was taken to another room i felt cold which means it's nighttime I was dragged through doors and rooms. It is hard to explain when my body hurt from all the torture, so it was hard to concentrate of what was going on around me. I was then thrown against the wall and got knocked out. This literally makes no sense. You know, it makes even less sense because, like, the whole reason Quirrell is doing all of this is because Voldemort is on the back of his head, right? Voldemort is using him as like a vessel to keep himself alive at the moment. And it doesn't make any sense to kidnap Anastasia because Anastasia is the daughter of one of Voldemort's most loyal Death Eaters. Like, um, again, unless this has been rewritten, so all of the relationships um, in the story are different from that of canon, other than the fact that Anastasia exists and Snape had a wife, um, this literally makes no sense. You make no sense. Try again, please. Third person point of view. While Anastasia was knocked out, Harry, Hermione, and Ron were following Snape where the Sorcerer's Stone was. They were, were, Fluffy was. Wait a minute, he's a blow up the air and the cape flutters of them sleeping ron said there was a harp in the room and was playing music snape's already been here he put a spell on the harp they approached the sleepy dog the dog sleeps soundly if there 
is music around it calms him. Uh, it's got hor- Uh, it's got horrible breath, Ron said. We have to move its paw, Harry said to Hermione and Ron. What? Ron half whispered, half yelled. Come on, grabs paw, which is blocking the door. Okay, push. They strayed to move it. They opened the door. I'll go first. Don't follow you until I give you- Don't follow it till I give you a sign. Fluffy's eyes opens. If something bad happens, get yourselves out. Does it seem a bit quiet? The harp stopped playing. The harp, it stopped playing, Hermione said. Drool from one of the heads comes down on Ron's shoulder. Ew, yuck, ugh. The three students look up to see Fluffy standing there. Fluffy barks and growls, thrashing. It breaks the harp and dives at the three. Jump, go. The tree Gryffindors jump down the trap door. Ah, Ron gasps as he land on some mushy black rope-like vines. Whoa, lucky this plant thing is here, really, he said in relief. Whoa, Harry said as the plant begins to move towards them. Oh, ah, the plant tr ties them up. Stop moving, both of you. This is devil snare. You have to relax. If you don't, it will only kill you faster, Hermione said, relaxing. Kill us faster. Oh, now I can relax. This is literally just all the seed from the movie. Do I want to read all of this or do I just want to skip it? I guess I'll read it. Ron said, panicking. Hermione manages a sarcastic smile as she is sucked down below. Hermione, Ron and Harry screamed. Now what are we going to do? Ron panicked. Just relax. They could hear Hermione's voice, but they couldn't see her. Hermione, where are you? Harry asked. Hermione was down below them. Do what I say. Trust me, she said. Harry relaxes and is sucked through. Ah, Harry! Ron screams. Harry falls through and lands on the hard ground. Hermione goes over to him and he stands up. Harry! Ron screamed again. Are you okay? Hermione asked Harry. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, Harry answered. Help! Ron screamed. He's not relaxing, is he? Hermione asked. Apparently not, Harry answered. Help! Help me! Screamed again. We've got to do something, Hermione said. What? Harry asked. Uh, I remember reading something in Herbology, she said. Help! Rod kept screaming. Um, devil snare, devil scare. The snare shuts Ron's mouth. It's deadly fun, but we'll soak in the sun. That's it. Devil snare hates sunlight. She takes out a wand and points upwards. Lumis Solum. I probably didn't say that right. She said loudly, and a beam of light shoots out. The snare shrieks and recoils, and Ron falls below. Ah! Ron screamed. Ron, are you okay? Harry asked. Yeah, he said, with relief of being alive. Okay, Harry said. Phew! Lucky we didn't panic, Ron said, standing up as if nothing happened. Lucky Hermione pays attention in herbology, Harry said with a serious look. Then there is a sound. What is that? Hermione asked. I don't know. Sounds like wings, Harry said. They enter into a room filled with golden birds. You know, had Anastasia not been randomly kidnapped by Professor Quirrell, this would have been a lot more interesting to read if she was involved in these events. But because she's not, literally, we could have skipped all of this just skipped it all because this is literally word for word basically what happens in the movies and i'm pretty sure the books again i haven't read the books i need to do that but like this is just it's so boring to read because it's literally just what happens in canon no changes whatsoever it's just canon and I am so irritated, and I don't really want to read this. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey skip of a few minutes. You could have done that earlier. You could have done that earlier. There was no need to write out that entire scene. No. That was ridiculous. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? Jeez. How much more of this? Oh, I looked ahead. We're switching back to Anastasia's point of view soon. Thank God. <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying that, but thank you. Harry walks down a long staircase to an empty room with pillars around it. But then a body catches his attention. He slowly winched to it to see 
a surprise. It was Anastasia. She was missing for two weeks, but never thought she would be here. He went running towards her. Her skin was cold and pale. She was still breathing. He hadn't. He still hadn't seen Quirrell in front of the mirror that shows your greatest desire. Anne! Anne, wake up! Wake up, he said. But then he saw Anastasia open her eyes. Harry, she asked. Yes, it's me. How did you get down here, Anastasia? He asked. She just pointed over to Quirrell. You? Harry asked the professor. Quirrell turns around. No, it can't be. Snape, he was the one. I, Anastasia's point of view. I couldn't hear much of what they were saying. I mean, I know about the rock and such, but I couldn't understand them because I was out of it. But I could see a bit blurry. But I saw my wand on the floor not far away from me, so I grabbed it and hide it. Why would he kidnap her and let her keep her wand? You think that would have been taken away from- She didn't- I don't even think she had her wand. When Snape grabbed her. And she ran off. What? Then I heard Voldemort telling Harry to join him. He is a too smart to join your stupid club, Voldemort, I say, standing up, leaning against the wall. And you, shut up, I will deal with you in a moment, he said. Then Voldemort told Quirrell to kill Harry. No, I screamed as I grabbed my wand and used stupefy. I say, as he was going to attack my friend. But he got up quickly and he came over to me, but Harry tried to get him away. Quirrell grabbed him but got burned. So Harry attacked him and touched his skin, and Quirrell died, but Voldemort came out as the body was destroyed and went through Harry, and then through me, and then everything went black as I fell down the stairs I was up. Jeez. I'm tired. <laughs> Snape's point of view. I got the news that Anastasia was found in the secret vault where the stone was. Why, they don't know. I just rushed to the hospital wing and saw her lying in bed. Oh, Cerberus, she is okay. Well, now. But they brought her here. She was an inch from death. She had cuts and bruises. But the cuts were magically made by a curse, most likely, which means that she was kidnapped by Quirrell, according to Mr. Potter, who woke up today, and told us most likely why she was there, Madam Pomfrey said. I was so mad. How could I let this happen to her, I think to myself. Then Madame Pomfrey and I hear a groan from Anastasia, who was opening her eyes. I will leave you two alone, she said, leaving. Father, Anastasia asked. Yes, I'm here, I say in my normal voice, my normal cold voice. I then hear sobs coming fro Anastasia. What is wrong, Anastasia? I asked her. Sob, nothing. It's just that sob. I am safe now. Sob. She was crying more. What did Quirrell do to you, Anastasia? I asked her. He used the Crucio curse on me for several hours for information I refused to give him. Sob. She said, I was shocked that my daughter had to experience such a horrible thing for two weeks straight. Well, you're safe now, Anastasia, I tell her. Oh, jeez. This is the chapter before the end of the book, so I wanted to make the ending long and with the detail. But you didn't do it in the right spot. You just copy and pasted the dialogue and seed from the movie. The next chapter will be uploaded on Monday or Tuesday, so comment, follow, vote, etc. Sorry if there are mistakes. Bye bye. Word count. And there's a lot more because you literally just copied what happened for the book, but in the movie, but it's fine. It's fine. Because the next chapter is so short. This video is pretty long, but because the next chapter is so short, I'm just gonna read it quickly, and then we can be done with at least the first book of Cerberus Snape's Depressed Daughter. Chapter 8. The Adventure is Just Beginning. Chapter 8. The Adventure is Just Beginning. Anastasia's Point of View. Well, you are safe now, Anastasia, my father said. I was crying. Why? Because I was back, and I was safe. Father... Am I a disappointment to you? Well, that just came out of nowhere, but okay. I asked him. That question has been bothering me for a while now, since he said I was when I was sorted into Gryffindor. I thought you were. <laughs> oh, okay. But now I see you're not, Anastasia. When he said, I felt so happy and more tears streamed down my face. That's all I wanted to hear my whole life, I say. 
Then my father came closer. You wanna know what? This interaction should have been saved for like way later in the series. Like had had the author kept up with all the updates and like writing out Anast Anastasia's story, this should have been saved for like book six or book five. Like this should have like been built up to not just it's fine. I'm okay. No, I'm not. That's a lie. I say, then I then my father came closer. Well now you heard it. Rest, you will need your strength. We will have to talk later, Anastasia. He then left. Then Harry, Ron, and Hermione came running in. Anastasia, we heard you were awake. How do you feel? Hermione asks. Okay, I will assume Okay, I will assume. So it wasn't my dad who was going after the stone now, was it? I say looking at them. You already knew that though. Yes, we know. Sorry for accusing your dad, Ron said, while the other two just nodded. It's okay. At least you are sorry, I say, smiling lightly. Anastasia, you were gone for two or more weeks. What happened? Out of nowhere, Dumbledore came. Oh, Headmaster, you scared me. Well, I prefer that my friends leave first, I say. Could you guys leave for a moment, please? I say. They nod and leave. Now tell me what happened in those two weeks, Dumbledore said. Well, Quirrell kidnapped me and kept me somewhere. I don't know where. He he tortured me every day with the Crucio curse for hours and hours, I say with tears in my eyes. Why did he torture you? What did he want? He asked. He knew that Harry or my father were trying to stop him from getting the Sorcerer's Stone. He knew I knew something and that I knew who was after him. Of course it was Harry, but I didn't say anything. I'd rather die than betray my friends. I really wish all of this information had been established earlier in the story when it made sense and not just thrown randomly in at the end, but it's fine. What you did as very brave. Madam Pomfrey told me that you could leave tonight. Tonight is the day we give the house cup, so I assume you will be there, he said. Yes, headmaster, of course, I tell him. And with that, he leaves. I get up and went to the girls' dorm and changed into Gryffindor uniform and went and talked with Hermione. Wibbly wobbly time skip, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we were all in the great hall when Dumbledore spoke. Another year gone, and now, as I understand it, the house cup needs a warding. And points stand thus in fourth place Gryffindor with 312 points. Clapping. Harry and Hermione hide their heads. Third place, Hufflepuff with 352 points. Clapping. It's second place, Ravenclaw with 426 points. Clapping. And in first place, with 472 points, Slytherin House. There is immense cheering. Dumbledore continue. Yes, yes, well done, Slytherin. Well done, Slytherin. However, recent events must be taken into account, and I have a few last minute points to award. This is just gonna be a repeat of the ending scene in the first Harry Potter movie, isn't it? Oh boy. The Gryffindor students look up. To Miss Hermione Granger. None of that is spaced. For the use of cool intellect when others were in great peril. 50 points. Applause. Harry pats Hermione back. Hermione's back. Good job, he said. Second to Mr. Ronald Weasley. Also not spaced. For the best played game of chess, Ron looks at Harry and mouths me. Harry nods and mouths you. That Hogwarts has seen these many years. 50 points. Applause. Third to Mr. Harry Potter for pure nerve and outstanding courage. I award Gryffindor 60 points. Immense cheering. We're tied with Slytherin, Hermione said. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to your enemies, but a great deal more to stand up to your friends. I award 10 points to Neville Longbottom. Immense cheering erupts. Neville is unbelieving. And finally, it takes bravery and courage to put friends before life and sac sacrifice yourself for the ones you love and care. That is not something many people would do. So I proudly give to Anastasia Lily Snape 95 points for that courage and bravery. Of course she gets awarded more points than the main characters, because why wouldn't she? Anastasia had a shocked look on her face. Everyone was cheering like never before. Assuming that my calculations are correct, I believe that a change in decorations is in order. Claps. The green banners change to Gryffindor red and yellow. Gryffindor wins the house cup, Dumbledore said, cheering. 
Yes, Hagrid said while he grins. All students stand and throw their hats into the air, except Draco, who smashes his down onto the table. All rub each other's hair, jump around, cheering and laughing. Gryffindor won the house cup. Another time skip. So Anastasia, will you come with us on our express, Hermione asks. No, I will leave with my dad, but see you after break, I say. Yeah, see ya, she said. I look to Ron. Bye, Ron. Have a great break, I say, smiling. Yeah, bye, he leaves. One minute, Harry told the redhead and the girl, and he walked towards us, Hagrid and Anastasia. I wish you could have clarified that Anastasia was standing by Hagrid, but okay. Thought you were leaving without saying goodbye, did ya? Harry, Hagrid told him. Hagrid takes a red album out of his coat pocket and hands it to Harry. This is for you, Hagrid told Harry. He opened and thanked him. Hen then looked my way. Goodbye, Harry. I hope your break will be good. Of course, be sour to come back home. Hogwarts, I mean, I tell him. Bye, Anastasia, he said, going to his two friends at the Express. Feels strange to be going home, doesn't it? Hermione said. I'm not going home. Not really, Harry answered. The train whistles as they climb aboard. As the train starts to leave, the camera pans up over the whole scene. Harry waves out the window to Hagrid and Anastasia. As the train starts moving, he got in again. Hagrid and Anastasia start going back to Hogwarts. Maybe this would be the beginning of her adventures at Hogwarts. Oh, <sighs> finally the end. Hello, Anna here. Finally, this is the last chapter, but don't worry, I'm going to create a sequel to this story. Hope you like this first book. This is the very first book slash story I've ever written, but okay, see you at the next book. Anna out. Bye-bye. P.S. If the last chapter is an author note, read it because it's the title of the sequel. Just telling you guys. Oh boy, that is it for the first book of Cerberus Snape's Depressed Daughter. That was a ride jeez i cannot believe for the last two chapters she just straight up copy and pasted what happened in the movies basically word for word with hardly any changes to them that's very that's very annoying we really should have gotten all of that from anastasia's point of view because most of the people who will be reading this story are Harry Potter fans. And if they've seen the movies or read the books, then they would have known, like, what was going on while we were focusing on Anastasia. Like, there was no need to do that. And it was just so irritating to read through. Like, it's literally just what happened in the movies and books. We don't care about that. We don't care. We want to know what's going on with your OC and what's happening to them. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'll start reading the sequel eventually soon. But that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're new. Because if you don't, I'm going to steal your toes. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>